Let's get some items with custom animations. Let's see how to do that. All right, we find ourselves in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding items with custom models and custom animations. Now, this is once again done with GeckoLib, so you will need that as a dependency. I show how to add this to your project in the first entity video. I will link that in the top right corner in the card if you have not done this, but the rest is going to be fairly simple. The first thing we'll need is, of course, a custom item to actually animate. Now, I have already prepared something that you will be able to download. This is the account staff remodeled right here, as you can see, and this is now just called animated item. So this is pretty much the idea. Now, this is a GeckoLib model. So this is very important. You actually are going to need a plugin, and that is going to be the GeckoLib animation utils right here. You have to download that, and then you can basically proceed. Because then what you can do is, when you open Blockbench, you can make a new GeckoLib animated model right here. So we're just going to call this test, whatever. It doesn't matter. Now, what we need to do then is go to File, Model Settings right here, Gecko Model Settings, and then switch this to Block Item. It might not always be under Block Item. I believe that it chooses the one that you last basically chose. So just choose Block Item, Confirm, and then you can continue. You can then just add the blocks and, you know, model as usual. Now, what's very important is that if you want to animate it, you actually do need to group those cubes together. That's very important because only the bones can be animated. So that's a very important thing to realize. Uh, but now let's actually take a look at the actual animated item. So what I did, you can see I have an inner cube that's just this gold block right here. And then everything else is just under another bone. And if I go to animate, then you can already see, right, the inner cube right here. I basically just have the, I just have an up and down animation with, once again, the sine wave and you can see it's just moving up and down basically in every every three uh, seconds here it goes up and down so nothing too crazy in this case but it still is pretty cool to have that basically in your hand now this is uh, one idle animation you once again can of course add multiple ones you can you could change them when you right click things like that all of that should be fairly straightforward all things considered now after we have both a model and an animation, we can now export this. So we're going to go to File, Export, and then we want to export the GeckoLib model. So this will export an, a geo file, as you can see right here, animated underscore item dot geo JSON. We're just going to save this. We're going to replace this. That's fine. And then we're going to be OK. You also need under Display, change basically the display setting. So you can see this is, you know, third person right, third person left, and so on and so forth. How, how it basically looks when you have it. Head really shouldn't care all that much. The ground might be interesting to change as well. Uh, the frame is something interesting to change. Uh, that's actually a little bit too far out. That's just something like that. That's going to be fine. And then the GUI as well. You can basically change this, how it looks in the GUI as well. I think that's this is going to be fine. And this is also going to be animated, by the way, inside of the GUI. So that's it's really it's really awesome. Let's just save this in the model again. How do we get the display right here? Well, for that, we go to File, Export, and then Export GeckoLib Display Setting. This is the one that we want. And you can see this is just the normal JSON file. So this is going to be your item model JSON file. So we want to save this as well. I already have this prepared, so I'm going to replace it. That's going to be fine. And then last but not least, the animation. Just go to the Animation tab. Then you will see this animation here at the top. And then just say Export Animations. You can select which animations you want to export. I just have one, so we're going to say confirm. And then once again, it's going to say, in this case, model animations. Now, I personally want to call this the animated underscore item animation.json. And there you go. That should be pretty much all of the things that we need. So three files exported from Blockbench, the GeoJSON file for the model. We have the normal model JSON file for the display settings, and then a JSON file for the animations. The texture here is, of course, also done by myself. So I've just created this by myself. The way to create a texture if you for example you know you don't have a texture and it looks crazy like this right what you can do is you can press ctrl a to select all the faces and you can then see every which face sometimes they're overlapping so you might have to you know click on it and then move it around to basically change it but it's going to be fine what you ha then have is once you have changed them around so that no faces overlap what you can then do is you can then say create texture name it whatever basically and then you can pick a pixel density i picked 256 pixels that way there were 16 by 16 pixels per voxel inside of blockbench and i like that and then you can see you can export this particular file put it into gimp or whatever type of program you're using for your textures and then just change it around and re-import it or just change the file here and then it's going to update so that's the general idea. After you have all of that, we can now proceed in IntelliJ once more. All right, so we find ourselves back in IntelliJ again, and let's first of all import all of the JSON files so that we have this out of the way. 
So these all go under resources assets tutorial mode and then the animations folder will of course hold the animation for your items and possibly your blocks as well. So this is going to be the animated item dot animation JSON. So let's just copy this over animated underscore item dot animation JSON. There you go. And you can see the idle animation is in here. That's perfect. And that's going to be fine. We also have a geo file. This is of course going to be the model. So how it actually looks the 3D model. We're going to copy this over as well. Animated underscore item dot geo dot JSON. That's going to be fine as well. And then last but not least, let's also add the item model, even though we don't, haven't added the item yet, but that's going to be fine. So this is the animated underscore item data JSON file. And you can see it pretty much just is a normal item model that you've similarly seen before as well. So it's not too crazy. This basically is just how it's displayed in different well, situations, third person, right hand, left hand, so on and so forth. Right, of course, we also want the texture. That's kind of important. Let's just add this here. This is the animated item underscore texture. So this is, of course, also available to you. This It just looks like this. So it's pretty much just the actual blocks texture. So it should be no worries at all. After we've added those, we can now proceed to the code. Right, when it comes to the code, first of all, we need a custom item class. So in our a custom package, right-click new Java class called the animated item. And this is going to extend the item class right here and it's going to implement the i animatable there you go so we're going to hover over this implement methods we're going to implement the two methods here for the interface and then we're going to hover over this again create constructor matching super and then we're almost done what we need is we need a public animation factory right here called factory and that's equal to a new animation factory and then we're just passing in this this is what we're going to return here in the get factory this dot factory and then that's going to be fine as well what goes into the register controllers is pretty much what has gone into the entity as well so it's just the animation data dot animate animation controller making a new controller here called controller and then we're also passing in the predicate now predicate is something we've not created yet but this is also something that is pretty much exactly the same as in the entity Entity as well. This is of course all available to you in the description below. Get a repository and individual just as well. So you can copy that over as well. And you can see the predicate pretty much is going to be the same either way. Now in this case it just has one idle animation but of course you can expand this predicate to include more animations and change this about as well. Now after we've implemented the actual item we can now go to our mod items class and actually register it. So let's just get this one right here. That's going to be fine. The raccoon spawn egg. This is going to be the animated item. And of course, the name is also going to be animated underscore item. There you go. And now this is now an animated item class. There you go. And we can delete the first three parameters here just so that we have the fabric item settings under our item group. And max count one is actually exactly what I want as well. Now, but we are not quite done just yet because we still need both a item model and an item renderer. So in our item package, we're going to right click new package called client, making sure that we write this correctly and not with a typo. There you go. And then instead of there, we're going to create two new Java classes. One of them is going to be the animated item renderer. And the other one is going to be the animated item model. Now the animated item model is going to extend the animated geo model of type animated item. There you go. And then we're going to hover over this implement methods. We're going to implement the three methods, the get model location, get texture location and get animation file location. Now those three well, different identifiers all point to the JSON files that we have basically exported from Blockbench. So that's literally all that there is to it. So we're going to say new identifier, of course, tutorial mod dot mod ID, and then geo slash animated item, animated underscore item dot geo dot JSON. So that's the model location, of course. I'm going to copy this over just so that we have this. And I'm going to change this to be textures under uh, slash item slash animated item underscore texture dot png there you go and then the last one the animation location is going to be animations and animated item dot animation not animations there you go this should be fine animated item geo should be fine and animated item animation json is also fine so this should be pretty much all that we need here and then in the renderer this is a way easier class it's just the geo item renderer of type once again animated item we're just going to hover over this and create constructor matching super and then instead of passing in the model provider here we're going to delete the parameter and then here we're just going to say new animated item model and that's pretty much it that's all that we need to do in this case and then we're going to be fine now to register the item renderer and the model correctly together we want to go into our client mod class right here we're just going to go at the very bottom this is going to be the geo item renderer dot register item renderer we're going to call mod items dot animated item comma new animated item renderer 
There you go. And now the actual item is also properly registered. So the renderer works fine as well. Last but not least, we also want to add a translation for the item. This is, of course, not the most important thing, but it's going to be fine. Animated underscore item. And then here as well, of course, it's going to be the animated item. There you go. So that is pretty much all that we need to do. Register a new item with a custom item class, implementing the iAnimatable interface, and then just get a renderer and a model as well. And then, of course, having the actual model modeled in Blockbench, that might be a little bit harder, but I'm sure that's going to be fine as well. So now let's go into the game and see if it works. All right, so we find ourselves in Minecraft and let's see. And here it is, the animated item, not to be confused with the Mithril staff, of course. They look very similar, but there you go and there you can see the you know, gold block basically moving up and down. And well, I mean, it's it's working pretty much exactly how you'd expect it to. And it is always animated. So you can see even there. And also in the inventory, you can see it. If you look at the hot bar, you can see it also moving up and down. So I would say that is pretty cool. And this can add, I mean, so much more depth into your items, into your custom items that are cool. It's it's really freaking awesome and not that hard, all things considered. All right, but that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new if you did. I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. Many thanks also to my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. And I will see you all in the next video. So, yeah.